Hello. Hello. I'm leaving. Hi. I'm leaving a gap there because our our videos haven't caught all the opening statements. So wanted to make sure it got to me. So uh, welcome to the League of Women Voters Candidate Forum for candidates running for Shoreview City Council. There are five candidates and everyone is participating and you will elect two people. This forum is not open to the public and is not being live streamed. It is being recorded and we will post it on our YouTube channel, League of Women Voters, White Bear Lake area. In addition, local cable stations will replay this forum on a schedule determined by them. Candidates, if for some reason your internet connection is lost, please call back in using your phone. I'm Mary Santi. I live outside the district in White Bear Township, and I'll be moderating. League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan volunteer organization that encourages citizens to participate in their government. While the League studies and takes stands on issues, we do not support or oppose any candidate or any political party. The goal of our forums is to learn more about the positions of candidates who will be on the ballot November 3rd. So the candidates who are here are um, in alphabetical order, Sue Denkinger, and tell me if I'm mispronouncing it because it'll it be whole, if, you do, if you don't correct me now, it'll be the whole thing wrong. No, perfect. Emmy Johnson, Jillian McAdams, Dave Olson, Abraham Wolf. All right. So you have one and a half minutes for opening statements and you'll go in alphabetical order, then we'll turn to questions. So why don't we just go ahead and start with Sue Denkinger. Okay. Hello, my name is Sue Denkinger and I'm running for re-election to the Shoreview City Council. I'm a 30 year resident of Shoreview at, where I raised two adult, now adult daughters uh, who attended the Moundsview schools. I graduated from Augsburg University with a bachelor's in communications and later a master's in business administration. Prior to running for office, I volunteered on the Economic Development Commission for years and also on the Economic Development Authority, where I worked on both economic and housing issues as a volunteer for the city. I spent my career at Thomson Reuters and my positions there included leading the customer service organization, manufacturing roles, and most recently working as a global business process owner on enterprise software installations. I'm running for re-election to the Shoreview City Council because I want to give back to the community that I so highly value. Shoreview's quality of life is reflected in its fiscal responsibility, environmental initiatives, beautiful parks and trails, um, human rights values, housing initiatives, economic development focus, and most of all on its residents. And my focus areas are economic development to keep the tax base solid and city property taxes low, housing initiatives, including maintaining our focus on affordable housing, and three, driving community engagement for every resident to understand their opportunities for involvement and value to the community. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Next to go is Emmy Johnson. Good evening, fellow candidates and Shoreview residents. Thank you to the League of Women Voters, White Bear Lake area for hosting tonight's forum. I'm honored to be with you to highlight my continued interest in serving the residents of Shoreview for another term uh, as a member of the city council. Throughout my previous eight years serving Shoreview, it has become clear to me that we are a community comprised of dedicated and engaged citizens, each of us doing our part to make Shoreview what it is today and for generations to come. It's been a great privilege to work alongside the mayor and my fellow council members as we continue leadership decisions and serve the public interest for the common good. Maintaining a balanced budget, increasing the diversity of our housing stock and attracting and maintaining the businesses that make our community strong are just some of the ongoing efforts we focus on in Shoreview. During my tenure, in addition to serving as a council member, I've also had the pleasure of supporting the city 
by leading the Shoreview Economic Development Authority, providing leadership on the Lake Johanna Fire Department Board, the Lake Johanna Relief Association, and lastly, by being an active leader for our youth and generations of families through Northeast Youth and Family Services, along with the community, Shoreview Community Foundation. My belief is that those who represent their communities have an obligation to make hands-on change through community organizations. While the challenges our community is facing are ever-changing, my core values have remained and will continue to be steadfast. Specifically, I will focus on three things, maintaining Shoreview's high quality of life, focusing on continued community safety, and lastly, having established key partnerships to make our community great. Thank you. Thank you. Next to go is Jillian McAdams. Hi, everyone. My name is Jillian McAdams, and I'm a candidate for Shoreview City Council. I've been a delegate in the CD4 district for several years, so I thought it would be great to step up my civic engagement and run for city council. So thanks again to the White Bear League of Women voters for inviting me to this forum today. So just a little bit about myself. I was born in St. Paul, and both of my parents were graduates of St. Paul Central High School. When my grandparents' house was taken by eminent domain to build the Oxford Community Center, they decided to explore the northern suburbs and move to Shoreview in 1972. In 1978, my parents followed suit and they built their first home in Arden Hills near my grandparents. And then several years later, my mother and I moved to the Royal Oaks community in Shoreview where I live today with my daughter. Since graduating from the University of Minnesota with a BA in journalism and an MBA in marketing, I've enjoyed a 30 year career in product development, brand strategy, operational efficiency and sales. And I currently work as a fractional marketing communications professional supporting programs within the healthcare education and nonprofit space. I'm currently completing my master's in organizational leadership at St. Catharines University and I also hold several professional certifications such as Six Sigma Greenbelt, ProSide Change Management and others. I've always known Shoreview to be an attractive, safe, livable community since I moved here at 12 years old in the late 1970s and I'd like to work hard as a member of City Council to keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you. Next to go is Dave Olson. Hi, everyone. My name is Dave Olson. Uh, thanks to the White Bear League of Women Voters for having this tonight. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to be running uh, for Shoreview City Council and uh, happy to be on this with everyone. Uh, I was actually adopted and raised in uh, Maplewood, North St. Paul area, went to high school there, went to Gus Davis for undergrad and then medical school at the University of Minnesota. I uh, went on to Notre Dame to do a sports medicine fellowship, so I do a mix of family medicine and sports medicine, with my family medicine mostly being in the North Minneapolis community, uh, in an inner city underserved clinic, and then my sports medicine clinic is actually in Shoreview, uh, as well as working with teams at the University of Minnesota, uh, the Minnesota Vikings, and the Minnesota Twins. Um, I think a lot of people ask me, why do I want to uh, run for city council? And really the biggest thing is I love my community. I love Shoreview. Uh, I lived in Roseville for 13 years and moved up to Shoreview seven years ago. Um, raised my three kids in the area. I love the parks and trails. I'm out there all the time fishing and hiking and biking. Um, but I really love the people of Shoreview. We have neighbors that have grown up in the houses with their parents and now live in those houses by us. And they talk about all the great things in Shoreview. Um, I also you know, wanna keep our schools safe and strong. With my medical background, I think I can help our businesses and schools be seen through this pandemic that we're going through. And also diversity. I think our schools and community are getting more diverse, but our leadership hasn't. And I wanna help be part of that change. Thank you. Finally, uh, Adam, Abraham Wolf. Thank you, Mary. Uh, my name is Abraham Wolf. I am running for city council for the city of Shoreview. Um, I come from a, a wide variety of different families, uh, living in Northern Minnesota and uh, being adopted by my aunt, uncle in uh, Northfield, Minnesota. Uh, I've been able to see many different cities, many different communities. Shoreview is a, a, a wonderful community that I've been a part of for 10 years that has a variety of parks, a variety of uh, events, a slice of Shoreview, all different things that are very inclusive uh, for me. I uh, uh, Professionally, I have been a banker. I've been a financial advisor. I've been a reserve police officer working towards being a police officer. And uh, right now I work as a executive consultant, uh, finding people jobs. 
my main purpose for running uh, is that right now I'm in the uh, planning commission. I've been a vice chair for the last year and a half. I love serving. Uh, during this epidemic, I found ways to serve uh, outside of my job, outside of my family, where I've actually, uh, everybody was concerned and scared. And I took a part-time role of helping people out at a grocery store. Uh, my main three uh, pillars of purpose is to decrease the city of Shoreview's debt, uh, find ways to increase revenue without increasing taxes, and drive for community involvement. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll now turn to questions. The questions were solicited from the public on our LWV email, and uh, we got quite a few. So we'll get through as many as we can in the time we have. After all, quest all candidates have asked, answered a question, raise your hand if you would like a rebuttal, and I'll call on you as I see it. So for this first question, um, the person who begins is going to be Dave Olson. And this is the question, what strengths do you bring to the council as a leader? Yeah, so I think uh, I have a lot of strengths uh, as a leader. I work as a leader uh, in the medical world with a lot of our uh, teams, uh, with our schools locally. I've worked as a leader with a lot of things with the pandemic. So with some of these protocols on getting back to schools and getting back to sport, I've taken a big leadership role in that. I think the thing that I do that's helpful as a leader is I listen to people. I engage other people. I don't just try to lead by telling people how to do things. Uh, rather, I think it's better as a leader to listen to people and help push forward other people's ideas as well and lead by example that way. Thank you. Uh, next comes uh, Emmy Johnson. Uh, so what my strength, uh, strengths are as a leader, so I spent the last 30 years uh, growing my leadership and I have done it uh, by listening and learning from others and having amazing mentors. But really at the core of what I am as a leader is I am a connector. I'm a mentor and I'm a coach. And I believe strongly as a council member, you have to make, wear many hats because you are a city's leader and everyone in the community looks to you as a leader. So if you can be a coach and you can be a mentor and you can be a teacher, um, it's amazing how the residents flourish under your leadership. And so uh, I believe strongly in being uh, an active listener, um, but not just listening, actually acting and doing based on what you hear. So I've been fortunate uh, to be a leader up to this point, and I desire to continue to play a leadership role in our city. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next to go is Jillian McAdams. Yes, I think um, to be an effective leader, you have to be uh, have a perspective of service. And that's one of the pers perspectives that I always take when I engage with people. Um, and if somebody were to entrust me as a city council member, as their leader of the city of Shoreview, I would come with a, an open ear and an open mind and look for opportunities to serve my neighbors in my community. I think part of that is getting out there and being a uh, part of community engagement, finding um, those nuggets and gems of folks that have been here like myself for 30 or 40 years in the community and, and learning from them, but also engaging more of the youth and bringing them along and giving them a vision for the city that we live in and allowing them to show their leadership skills too, because I think there's a leader in all of us. So that's one of the things I would like to do um, as a leader at city council is, is to create a, a um, more transparency and more opportunities for community engagement so I can lead people into um, feeling like more of a part of the community. Thank you. Uh, next is Abraham Wolf. Thank you, Mary. Uh, leadership for me, um, uh, as we all grow and, and develop, we all learn differently, of course. Uh, for me, uh, leadership has been how to listen and be that person that is there when people need to talk. And when individuals such as my example uh, with the planning commission, I, my main purpose is to put myself in their situation, their spot, find out how that affects their community, their involvement, uh, all of the above. And that's the main purpose of uh, how I look at leadership. I don't wanna be the know-it-all and answer all the questions without actually uh, putting myself in their, their shoes. Uh, for example, uh, right now I, I find people roles 
uh, for, for jobs, and whether it's an executive, a uh, high-level executive for a Fortune 100 company or a uh, maintenance person for a smaller company. Each person you listen to and you take in and find out what the value is and uh, be able to help mold, coach, and mentor that person. Thank you. Thank you. And so De Denkinger, finally. Okay. Yes. Um, I think my leadership strengths are collaboration. I, uh, Amy mentioned this, and I really enjoy too, connecting people that need something with people that can provide it. And also taking a group of people and sometimes in what seems like an impossible task and getting a common goal and seeing how we can use everybody's talents and abilities towards that to achieving that goal. And I just find that really exciting. Um, another element that I heard was, uh, I also believe in what's called servant leadership. And I think Jillian mentioned that um, as well. And I do believe as a leader, if you've got that ability and you've got the drive to do it, the passion, there's an obligation in that. I, I think if you're gonna put yourself in the leadership role to, to try and serve others. And the other piece that I did wanna mention was, um, I try to listen and I try to be fair and keep a balance between the common good or the and individual needs as well. And sometimes that involves being direct and honest and, and saying, you know, you may not be able to achieve what you want, but let me tell you how you can best try or how I can support you. But sometimes it's delivering hard news or that residents don't wanna hear, uh, but it's being fair and honest enough to listen to them, to do what you can and to be direct if you can't do what they'd like. Thanks. Thank you. So you probably don't have rebuttals on this kind of question, but if you have anything to add, we can give you each 30 seconds more. David Olson. Yeah, so I just wanted to add a, a big part of leadership for me. I actually, the reason why I'm here uh, running for city council is I had a group of leaders from Moundsview and Irondale, Irondale schools that are youth in the area that really pushed me. We got together and we're talking about things in the community, a lot of the tough things that are going on in our city and our country. And they basically told me, hey, if you're a leader, why don't you go in and try to do something for our city? And I challenged them back and said, I'm willing to do that, but I want you to be my campaign managers. And hopefully if I uh, get elected, come on in and, and be on committees and be active leaders as well. So I think the youth in our area are huge and we have a great- Thank you. Thank you. Emmy Johnson. One of the elements about leadership that I think is critical is uh, the word continuity. And I think as we look at the city of Shoreview, we have had a long history of continuity. The mayor's been in role for over 22 years and has been a servant uh, to us as, as residents. And I've been in the city for 23 years and raised my family as well. I think the continuity plays a key role in establishing um, a, a community where people want to live work and raise their family. And so continuity to me feels like another element of leadership success. Anything further? Okay, we'll go on to the next question. And the first to answer on this one will be Emmy Johnson. Question is, do you believe the parks and trails in Shoreview are accessible? Are the parks and trails maintained well enough? Well, uh, we happen to have 88 miles full of trails in the city of Shoreview. And I have to tell you, I haven't been on all 88, but we do have amazing trails. But moreover, we have a long, long term strategy to keep those trails maintained and to evolve them. So parks and the Parks and Trails Commission for the city plays a key role. We most recently embarked upon an enhancement to the Shoreview Commons. And I happen to live closely uh, to that area and uh, during this pandemic, it's been remarkable to watch our community come alive and thrive in a place where it's a, it's a community gathering place. But our parks are used, unlike some cities, and we have a long-term strategy content to continue to maintain um, the safety of those parks uh, as, as they're used. And then I would also just add, um, it's imperative that we work closely with Ramsey County because the Ramsey County Park Systems reside within the city of Shoreview, right. Snail Lake Park, Turtle Lake, et cetera. And so uh, we can't go out alone. And it speaks to having great partners um, and great members of the community that want to live a healthy life by using our parks and trails. Thank you. Next to go is Sue Denkin Denkinger. Okay. Um, 
I believe overall that our parks and trails are accessible. Are they perfect? Nothing's perfect. Uh, but I do, I was driving around the city the last couple of days and I noticed how many, I called them connectors there were, where neighborhoods could access a park by just a short little sidewalk that cut through between two homes. Very unobtrusive, but I thought the thoughtfulness that goes into making sure that people can bike through a neighborhood without disturbing the residents on either side I mean, it just demonstrates how much thought goes into it. And I also wanted to echo what Emmy said is there's a very, uh, Shoreview has a five-year operating plan and a two-year budget, very planful um, city staff. And so parks and trails are regularly reviewed to see where the opportunities are. Adding one along County Road E is one. There's a new one along Lake Wabasso. So, um, and sometimes opportunities come up sooner than later. Um, other times you have to work through a neighborhood, perhaps having an objection to uh, being able to see a trail out that back door. But um, I believe the city is very planful and um, without being too aggressive, works with neighborhoods in order to do that. And the only other comment I wanted to make is sometimes I'll hear from people, they wish the trails were more cleared in the winter. And I think some of them are, but that would be a very expensive task, so. Thank you. Next up is Adam Abraham Wolf. It's okay. My brother's name's Adam. So. Uh, thanks, Mary. Uh, you know, interestingly, uh, my wife and I and kids, we ride our bike a lot on the, tr uh, on the trails. So I have great affinity for the trails, for the city workers, for the co uh, community that takes care of that. Uh, I always look at fun sayings, and I think we should change our name to uh, Shoreview Lakes, Parks, and the Community, because I think that we all uh, have all three of those, and those are really important. I would say uh, there is a, a lot of spots where there's water that has overtaken areas that need to be taken care of. I don't know the extent of it. I know that from my review and my financial background, I believe in the next two or three years, we're gonna increase our budget and I don't know where that's going by $1.8 million. I hope that's part of it. Uh, but for the quality of the community, quality of the parks, uh, I, I feel like uh, they're uh, pretty good overall. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, David Olson. So for me, uh, like I said in my opening, our parks and trails are near and dear to my heart. Uh, I just really love them. Uh, I think in my work in medicine, we always talk to patients about being more active in sports medicine and family medicine as a way to be healthier. And probably the best medicine that we have for people is exercise. And the trail system that we have allows that. And I think like people have said during this pandemic, I have seen so many of my neighbors out walking and using mm -hmm. the trails that I've never seen out before. It's, I mean, it, it's just amazing out there. So I would agree, I think Abraham talked about, I, I do a lot of biking. There are some areas by Snail Lake that get flooded out. I mean, I think it's just a little bit how it is over there. So continuing to improve and maintain our, our trails and parks is gonna be very, very important. I think it's something that brings people into our community. Um, and like I said, it just gets the community out there. And when you have things like this going on, it gives you that ability to talk to your neighbors and be out there and gather and just really enjoy our community. Thank you. Uh, next up, Jillian McAdams. Yes, um, I'm sure some of the other city council uh, members that are here today that have served before have had, um, you know, preview to some accessibility um, reports and, accept, um, and, and maybe there has already been an assessment, but I personally think that they're very accessible. Um, to David's point, I think that I've seen more families, more seniors, more strollers, more bikes, skateboards, even roller skates out on the parks, in the parks and on trails than I ever have in many, many years. Um, but I think we can always do better if there's an opportunity to do another assessment to make sure that everybody has an equitable opportunity to use our trails. Um, I think that would be a great thing to do. I think Shoreview is known as one of the cities that people come to from surrounding suburbs. Um, we're kind of known as the health and wellness um, city because we have so many beautiful parks and so many beautiful trails. I think it'd be nice to see, I think it's accessible, but I think it would be nice to see more utilization. I would like to see, you know, more hiking days for families, more bike-a-thons, more walking clubs, and again, just driving people to, to use those things to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. And is there anything further anyone wants to put in? Oh, sorry, my hand's over here. <laughs> I'm not always used to the iPad camera. I just, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I just had a, a comment and then um, I thought Jillian's suggestion of the, you know, having more, driving more people to actually use the parks is a good idea. And we recently, a week ago, Monday, had a city council goal meeting. And one of the things we talked about is the city does a lot of outreach, but how might we be able to bring the government to the people in a way for people who aren't able to engage or maybe are uncomfortable coming to city hall. And one of the things we talked about, it would be great to have activities in the parks where government leaders came out and actually interact and, and talked with people kind of in their home turf or at a park. Um, so wonderful idea. Thank you. Anyone else? Jillian McAdams. Yeah. To that end, I'll just say in our neighborhood, we have a gentleman here who plays a really good guitar. And so right around 6 p.m. at sundown, all the families that want to come over, we get together in the park and we just do sing-along songs. Wow. And, you know, just something simple as this land is my land or, you know, whatever it is. And so it's another way to get people into those gathering spaces and to meet their neighbors. So I would highly recommend it. Good idea. David Olson. So I'm sort of on the south end of Shoreview by Lake Owasso, and I would say just the access thing is probably important. A little trickier, I think, on that south side of 694 mm -hmm. to uh, get access and enter the park. You can sort of south of Snail Lake, but uh, in with the construction, hopefully that'll be a little bit better, but it, it is a little bit trickier in that south Shoreview area. So hopefully making it more accessible and equitable for all people in Shoreview. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else? We'll go to the next question. And the person who will start this is Abraham Wolf. And the question is, in what ways do you think the Shoreview City Council should work to enhance public involvement in local government, especially with young people? Thank you, Mary. Uh, I would say, uh, I know the city, uh, city council does a really good job for uh, bringing in uh, individuals. I believe there's a, uh, a young um, high school uh, age uh, group that comes in, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But I think if uh, city council for me, uh, my wife's a teacher. Uh, I've been, I've volunteered in her schools. I've volunteered uh, at different events. I think it's, if the city council and if I was given that opportunity and blessed with the potential opportunity to be a city council member, I would jump in uh, with that and volunteer and be a part of say government opportunities, whether government classes and have them come to city council and invite them. I think the biggest thing is we need to be asking uh, for them to come in. We can't just uh, expect them to come in. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is David Olson. So I, I, again, I talked about this a little bit already, but the youth piece for me is, is vital. Uh, it's really, you know, why I'm here. I've got this great group of, uh, of youth from the area, young adults that are sparked and, and ready to get involved with things in Shoreview and make things, you know, better in their community. So the biggest thing for me is finding ways that they can get involved. So encouraging them to go to meetings or, or be on the Zooms, um, figure out ways that they can be active within committees. And I think that for a lot of us, it's just you know creating those opportunities for the youth. So finding ways that we can encourage people and maybe not just get the ones that we know want to come out and do this, but expose other uh, youth in the area to, to possibilities and maybe even careers that they've never even thought of. Thank you. Next to answer, Sue Denkinger. Um, I, it's something that David just said sparked a, an idea I had. One of the things that, that I think would be very helpful would be to engage youth and even looking at what government positions there are, because I, I do know from working on city council that there have been many discussions about increasing the diversity even of city staff, but there's a difficulty in recruiting um, and, and maybe interest level or awareness of those positions. So I think it would be a great 
opportunity to bring youth in. And I actually have also thought we have a citizens academy every two years where 20 citizens come in and they actually work with every aspect of city government to see how things work. Um, and then it's enlightened them enough that they know how to work within local government effectively to not get frustrated, but to actually be able to do that. And sometimes they move on commissions. I actually think we should do the same thing with youth and have it be a youth citizens academy group that introduces them to what it's like, what roles are out there. And you could expand it again to the opportunities to look what kind of jobs there are in government, because there are a lot of different kinds of jobs. So those are some ideas that I have and maybe some virtual Zoom type meetings with students so that they can participate at home and don't have to come into City Hall. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, and the next to answer is Emmy Johnson. So uh, currently, uh, I feel like we have, as, as a community, opened up the door for young adults to get involved. We were one of the first cities in the Twin Cities to pass the tobacco law, and that was brought forth by students yes. in the school district. Um, the Human Rights Poster Contest, once a year, there's a poster contest in the city of Shoreview, and it is the only time in the mm -hmm. entire year that the council chambers is completely filled with youth. And so I feel like we have platforms available, um, but we can always enhance it and make it better. And I, I would just offer up that we are co-located on our campus with the city of Shoreview with the Moundsview Public Schools and um, the library. And that affords youth the opportunity to be a part of all, um, all that we can offer them in terms of services. But at the end of the day, junior achievement is an area where kids learn how to get involved and many of the council members that are currently in position uh, volunteer along with the mayor to go out into the schools and teach junior achievement. So it gives them a level of introductory into what civic uh, duties are available as they age. Thank you. Okay, Jillian McAdams. Yeah, to piggyback on what somebody else said, I think it was Sue, I think it's really important for us to better communicate the um, Citizens Leadership Academy not only for the adults, because um, I just learned about it about six months ago, okay. um, but also for the youth. I mean, really creating a, a Youth citizen Leadership Academy would be great. I became a delegate in the area almost as a civics lesson for my daughter. I just felt they weren't covering it enough in her school. And so she challenged me to step up and become a delegate and become a part of the caucuses. And I think there's an opportunity for us to work with that group too and to get more youth involved and more engaged. In addition to that, I run a Girl Scout troop in the area, and we had a chance to go into chambers and meet with Sandy Martin, Mayor Sandy Martin, and she expressed to the young ladies there, you know, to, to step up and find their voice and how easy it is to serve as well. And we should be reaching out to more Girl Scout troops, Boy Scout troops, you know, whatever other organizations there, there are. I think there's an opportunity there as well. I know YP government um, is embedded over at Moundsview Community Center where my daughter takes Taekwondo. I'd love to see that get embedded in the Shoreview Community Center as well. And then also there's a huge draw when we um, sponsor robotics competitions in the area at the schools. Mm -hmm. It would be great if we could hold some um, mock courts and get the kids involved in mock court um, government in uh, our community center or at the library as well. Thank you. Uh, anything further to add, anyone? Yep, well, here's my hand. Wrong side. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm just, I feel like I'm turning this into a brainstorming session, but, um, but I do think there's um, opportunities that, and I, elections came to mind. I mean, we're right in the middle of a voting cycle here. We have actually three of our five precincts this year uh, voting at the community center simply because of COVID, COVID restrictions on some of the other locations. But what a great opportunity we have to even hold some kind of a seminar class on what the voting mechanics look like, particularly in light of all the noise around mail-in ballots and, and that type of thing. It, I think it's essential that our kids learn this stuff um, intimately, for lack of a better term, um, particularly ha after having heard all the noise around voting and election fraud, et cetera, to see how it really does work. Thank you. Anything further from anyone? David Olson. I think uh, Sue also talked about this, just the awareness. So what I would encourage is, I think there's a lot of youth in the community that get exposed to a lot of things because they have active parents or leaders around them that get them involved. But I think we need to take that step and get into the community for the youth and kids that 
don't have that and aren't pushed and try to pull them in and see things that are going on government wise in the community as well. So I think taking that extra step and that extra effort is something that's really on us. Mm -hmm. Agree. Any other? Okay, we'll go to the next question. And uh, Jillian McAdams will begin. Do you see a need for additional low or middle income housing in Shoreview? If so, how would you address that need? Well, I think um, we do have a need. We currently have um, low income housing and I know that the council has been progressively increasing um, the accessibility to housing for everyone in our in our community. Um, and I think going forward, we need to continue to do that. You know, we want to represent Shoreview as an opportunity for young families to come here and get their children educated and to feel like they have the support systems around them, you know, for housing, for food, um, you know, for um, behavioral health issues, whatever it may be. And so, you know, um, Taking aside income, um, I just think that you know we we need to create an opportunity for everybody to come here, no matter what their income is, and to feel welcome and to feel supported. Thank you. Thank you. Next one to go is David Olson. So I would agree. Um, this is a very very important thing, and we need to make sure that people do feel welcome. Uh, people from all socioeconomic backgrounds need to feel welcome in Shoreview. We've talked about some of the great assets of Shoreview, the parks, the trails, the schools that should be readily available for, for all people. And I do, I commend the, the council and our mayor for doing a, a good job with this. And I think it's something that we just need to continue to strive at. Um, I think one important thing with housing and affordable housing is gonna be transportation for those people too. Right. So the housing is great, but if you can't get to jobs and things like that, then it doesn't, it's not really feasible. So we need to make sure that our transportation is set for people to get to those jobs where they can still enjoy everything Shoreview has to offer, but go where they need to for uh, work and things like that as well. Um, the other thing I would say is, uh, you know, diversifying what we have for that affordable housing, not having it all in one area of Shoreview, but spreading it out so people can enjoy the, all the different awesome areas that we have in our community. Thank you. Next up is Emmy Johnson. Over the last uh, 24 months, we've increased um, apartments slash condos by a thousand, over a thousand. And each one of those developments uh, required the developer to come forth to the Economic Development Authority and then into the Planning Commission and then the Council. But at the end of the day, they were required to increase their affordable housing percentage in order to allow the development to happen. And I really believe that that is what has helped us increase that housing stock for affordability. Um, at the same point in time, we can't stop there. There's a lot more work that will need to be done as we um, have developers come forth. The other piece of our housing stock um, that is, is, is a challenge, and we know that, um, is our aging housing stock. So when we think about families who need a home for a family, what does that housing stock look like outside of um, into a single dwelling? And so I think as we continue to look for opportunities, we recently purchased a parcel on County Road E to allow for a family to move in and, and afford them opportunity. And then I would agree with David, housing comes with transportation. We do not have affordable housing. It's very difficult for those residents to get to their job um, at, at, along with taking care of their children. Thank you. And Sue Denkinger. Um, so I do believe that there's a need for more low to middle income housing. Uh, we have worked hard and sometimes struggle to increase in a measurable way the affordable housing. We've uh, quite a few of these units that Emmy talked about are at market rate and market rate is, is not affordable for uh, low income families. But I think it's a critical opportunity for families with children because I believe that if you are placed in a strong school system um, where you can achieve and where it's expected that you'll achieve, you will achieve uh, for the most part. And so I think because our schools are of such high quality, it's critical for this community to work towards it. The challenge gets to be, of course, uh, we have a developer that's actually working on some affordable townhomes that will be built within the next year or so. 
Um, but keeping that at a manageable cost is very difficult, even when you get a discount on the property. Uh, but we're taking every opportunity that we can to do that. So, and I think Dave's point about transportation is well taken. Interestingly enough, Shoreview bus ridership is, is not that great. However, you always wonder, can people get to the bus? Is it going to the right place? So a regional approach I think is needed, is critical for transportation, public access to Shoreview and surrounding communities. Thank you. Abraham Wolf. Thank you, Mary. Uh, being a part of the Planning Commission, it, it really gives us a um, straightforward view of uh, affordable housing. We had a good example where we were talking with a potential uh, prospective uh, uh, developer that was going to renovate uh, a building. And he stated, he's like, we need to be a balance because we do not want to be known as a community that uh, that doesn't work well with developers when it comes down to uh, affordable uh, housing and middle uh, middle um, income housing. So I'm always looking at what's the balance? How do we work with what we need or goals and what does our community save right now? Yes, definitely affordable housing. And I'm always looking in as a group, uh, the uh, planning commission is always looking at how do we uh, not lose, but we consistently uh, be proactive and help uh, work with the community, work with the city council to gain more. Uh, but I think the busing is a big factor as a lot of our, uh, our, a lot of our uh, candidates and uh, have stated here that busing is a big factor when it comes down to affordable uh, transit and living in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Anything to add from anyone? Jillian McAdams. So I would also add that, you know, we're talking about um, the, you know, transportation supports or lack thereof, and it's, it's always been an issue, low, you know, low ridership in our area. But again, I would challenge back, you know, why are we forcing these people to leave our community to go find good paying jobs? I think there's an opportunity to actually create and challenge some of the partnerships with some of the, the larger organizations in town. Um, whether it's, you know, Lando Lakes or Cummins or Boston Scientific and let them put some skin in the game too and challenge them, you know, to um, hire more people in our local community and to come out into our community as volunteers and see what we have to offer. And so I think there's an opportunity there too that can lend itself to taking away this, this problem with, um, you know, ridership. Mm -hmm. Anything further? Okay, we'll go on to the next question. The first to answer it, it will be um, Sue Denkinger. Okay. And that question is, how can you support business in Shoreview? Uh, just generally speaking? That was the question. We All right, okay, so sure. Interpret it as you will. Okay. Um, I think in the short term, we've got businesses that are really struggling during the pandemic as in any community. Um, and one of the things that the Economic Development Commissioner of the city offered is um, low interest loans slash grants to businesses in the community with some funding that we have that actually was supplemented with some CARES funding. And that's been a huge help. Um, 29 businesses took advantage of that. They had to be small businesses in Shoreview and they had to meet certain criteria, but for some of them, it made the difference for them staying in business or not. It made them uh, be able to pay their rent or pay their salary of their employees and not lay them off. So um, I think that's something that the city can do and, and actually has done, and there are more funds available. So the other thing that um, we've done in, um, recently is created a, a website for businesses to attract businesses, to retain businesses called thinkshoreview.com and it has demographics on the city, education, you know, all kinds of information about transit, et cetera. And that's been a big help to businesses and to invite businesses to take a look um, at Shoreview. So those are just a couple of things as well as we have a program where we go out and visit businesses 
the Economic Development Commission, every year we've got a database we've created of all our businesses. We probably don't have all the home-based ones, but large, medium, small. So we actually go out and visit to see what they need and keep apprised of what activities they have and what their plans are. Thank you. Next to go is Jillian McAdams. Yes, um, I'll probably keep my answer brief on this because this is kind of a bone of contention with me since I heard that Deluxe is now leaving and mm -hmm. going to a campus downtown Minneapolis. So I'll, I'll try and say this with a smile. I'm very, very disappointed in the leadership at Deluxe right now because they support small businesses across the entire country. And they had an opportunity to take a leadership position and mentor businesses in Shoreview. They've been in the Shoreview community a long time. And I still think that we need to figure out a way to keep that partnership and develop that and draw that expertise back to the businesses before they abandon our small business owners in Shoreview. Thank you. And next up is Dave Olson. So I think for me, I, I think a lot of times you see in government that there are a lot of people with a lot of business savvy. Uh, and that's a strong background for a lot of people. So for me, coming from the medical side of things, I think sometimes when you don't have a lot of expertise in an area, it's, it's gathering up information from those people and, and trying to make best decisions with that. I think the unique thing that I can bring to the table as far as businesses in Shoreview is, you know, with the pandemic and everything, uh, a medical person within the city council could be very helpful as we continue to work through this. Unfortunately, it's probably not going to be weeks and months to get out of the pandemic, but could be months to years to get out of the pandemic. So I think having someone that's um, been involved with working with businesses and, and groups and hospitals and uh, leagues to work through the pandemic and really work for safety um, will help our businesses continue to thrive um, during these tough economic times. Thank you. Thank you. Next to go is um, Abraham Wolf. Thank you. Um, when I think about how I can support businesses, uh, my number one thought is, and the simple one, go out and use those businesses. That's the number one thing that I, I, I think straight out. And I try and do that uh, as a family, as a group, but then you start looking at a, a larger side. And uh, for me, I have some individuals that are in leadership roles within the community, uh, within businesses. And just being a citizen of our city, I've called them and asked them, how can I help? And that's, uh, that's as easy as it gets. And I think that's what us as leaders within the community can do is reach out. They may not be reaching out for help. And if we ask them, how can the city help? How can uh, we as planning commission or city council help and listen and find out if there's a spot where we can uh, we can help and plug and play and help out. So, thank you. And Emmy Johnson. So businesses are critical to our community. Um, and I think there's two words I would use for this question. It's about attracting, but also retaining. Uh, I think it's one thing to have the business here, um, but if no one's going to the business and no one's spending money at the business, we aren't gonna retain them. So we launched Think Shoreview this year, and that website has been hit, certainly by our small businesses, hit in terms of utilization. But it's being utilized because small businesses don't have the resources to have a social media team, to have a marketing team, to have an HR team. And so the city, um, in conjunction with the council, um, has offered opportunities for small businesses to use those resources. And so I think, again, it's about attracting them and retaining them. And then I also think it's just about um, this idea and notion that we are all in this together with businesses. Um, we have businesses that have been here for decades. Uh, why are they here and what keeps them here? And so keeping that open loop and ensuring that we're providing solutions to them uh, to allow for them to continue to be a business of choice in the city of Shoreview. Thank you. Anyone have more to add? If not, we'll go to the next question. The first to answer will be Abraham Wolf. Where do you where do you prioritize actions the council could be taking on climate change? Thank you for the question. Uh, depending on the situation. Uh, 
well, here's a good example. I had someone ask about the new park uh, and the new uh, water uh, within the sprinkler area. And I'm always looking at different things and uh, the beautifulness of it. And uh, someone uh, brought up that they have, it's going to be a task to empty it. And where does that water go? And then you start thinking about runoff. You start thinking about uh, where all of these things that we've added on that make our city beautiful. How can we be a partner with not only the environment, but the community? Uh, so I would say it, it depends on the situation. It really, it comes down to how do we get our cities, such as our uh, mow, uh, our lawn mowers, to be more efficient and less uh, gas powered potentially? Whether it goes to in the future going to a lot of solar power, uh, cutting down our electricity uh, costs, and looking at an investment such as that, all of those are things that the city council can be a part of in the future. Okay, next to answer, Jillian McAdams. Oh, that's, that's a great, great question. Thank you so much, Mary. A um, couple things came to mind. I made a few notes. And, and in terms of climate change specifically, I think all municipalities are going to have to take a deep look at preparation and start running scenarios of what if, what if, what if. I think that's the best thing we could possibly do. I've been here long enough to have been part of the Halloween snow where we got 36 inches overnight. And I think that, you know, just running some scenarios around snow removal and preparation, if for some reason we do have a, a, a climate event and we get another 20, 30, 40 inches at the same time, is the best that we can possibly do is to prepare. In addition to that, we know that um, the climate in the summer is getting drier as evident um, on the West Coast. We don't want to have acreage of our regional parks and our local parks burnt out either. So just being prepared to, you know, put some budget aside to clear away some of that underbrush, as well as making sure that we can service um, needs if there's a, a major fire that breaks out. Also, just you know, understanding that there's a lot of um, contamination of our waterways, and there may be remediation of the soil that's needed in certain areas that are being developed around the city. Also, just planning for some of that and being ready. So I think preparation is going to be the key. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next to go, David Olson. So yeah, climate change, I think, is a top priority for all of us, um, you know, not only in Shoreview, but across the world. Uh, my daughter is actually an environmental science major at the University of Minnesota, so she challenges me all the time on these things and teaches me a lot about it. Um, but I think we have to be prepared for this. And Jillian, you know, hit it on the head. I think we have to figure out ways to, to get ahead of this and plan for for things so we don't end up in a disaster scenario like we're seeing in, in some of the states across the country. So it happens at the city level. I mean, I think we have to make changes ourselves, and the council can be a big part of that. Um, it may look like some simple things, uh, but then it can be bigger. We have so many lakes in the Shoreview uh, community, we do have to protect those. I mean, it's a, a vital part of what we have in Minnesota in Shoreview has that as a big piece of it too. So uh, getting on top of those things, bringing in experts and getting advice uh, from folks to keep Shoreview the beautiful city it is, is gonna be very important. Thank you. Uh, next one is Sue Denkinger. This is a really good question. We talked about a little bit as part of the city council goals, uh, but it's, we've seen manifestations of this already. I think if anyone that's been in the Snail Lake which is a county park area knows and the restrictions on the trails because of the flooding we've had to raise Gramsci Road. It's been very impactive to homeowners in the area. And we ended up installing a, a new water pump that basically is pumping 24 seven because there was no way to mitigate the impact of that um, water without doing that. And residents are grateful, but you think there may be more things we can do. And a few things the city has done is um, They've got an incentive program, for example, now, so people using water irrigation systems for their lawn reduce the amount of water they're using. Uh, we just installed solar panels on a public works building, but there's more that I think could be done in that respect. Maybe moving the city vehicles to electric vehicles. We just installed two electric charging stations in the upper level of the community center for the general public to use, but um, 
there are, there's more that we can do, I think, as a city, including maybe making some public statements around our leadership and what we're aiming towards so that we're more visible about not only what's happening, but what we are planning to implement, for example, or look at in the coming years. Thank you. Emmy Johnson. We're fortunate in the city of Shoreview to have uh, Ellen Brenna, who has joined uh, staff uh, mm -hmm. just in the last 18 months. And Ellen has brought just a rejuvenation of ideas and thoughts and the water um, solution, as Council Member Dinkinger mentioned, uh, we increased our com composting uh, uh, opportunity. We went from bi-weekly recycling to weekly recycling. Um, we have uh, really realized that there, this is an all play. Um, so there's the policy component to it, which as council members is imperative that we instill, but it's also an opportunity for us to educate the residents on how the quality of life that they live can be in support of keeping um, the environment safe uh, and, and um, certainly healthy. The other thing is we have um, a green community award and that green community award is given to several residents who use um, uh, their yards and their property as a place in the space uh, to be environmentally friendly. And we just actually handed those awards out just less than a week ago. And uh, there are yards all over, the, all over Shoreview that you can see that uh, believe that our environment is critical to maintain um, um, a healthy environment. Fortunate to live in a beautiful community where people take this topic very serious. Thank you. Any anyone want to add some more? Jillian McAdams. Yes, I, I and again, just in thinking and listening to some of the other folks tonight, I think there's a great opportunity here again to engage our youth and to figure out a way maybe to get some grant mm -hmm. um, money in um, around the green space and really just driving some curriculum. Um, back into the school district, because if you start them out early thinking about climate change and their environmental um, footprint, it can really be ben beneficial to the entire community. So, you know, again, reaching out and trying to find some funding and getting some new STEM and uh, climate change um, curriculum and education into the Mounds Republic schools from K through 12, I think would be a great idea. Anyone else? Okay, we'll go on and the first one to answer this one is going to be David Olson. What is your vision for Shoreview five and 10 years from now? What policies and regulations do you want to see put in place to advance this vision? Yes, so I think, I think the biggest thing for me is to be more diverse in our representation um, have more equity for all people within Shoreview. Uh, I think we're moving in the right direction, but I really want to jumpstart that and have people see that at the local government level. And I think the biggest way that, uh, that I can do that is, is what I'm doing. And that's, you know, running for city council and uh, putting my best foot forward with that and trying to be a part of that solution. I think along with that and doing that it's it's maintaining and improving a lot of stuff that we've talked about tonight whether it's the economic and business side of things or if it is the climate change and the the great parks and trails that we have within shoreview but my biggest focus is to show the youth in the area that you know we are a diverse community uh, and we're becoming more diverse in a lot of different ways and we need to have that at the local government level Thank you. Next up is Emmy Johnson. My vision uh, for Shoreview in the next five to 10 years is to continue to make Shoreview a place where people want to live and raise their family. I'm inspired by the people that come back home to raise their family because they grew up here. So that tells me that uh, we have something that's working. Um, as I look at the policies that are in place uh, in our community, I know that they're going to need to continue to be enhanced as our inclusivity needs to to change. Um, as I look today at the community center and the community center expansion, and I think about the policies that were in place by those that were in leadership roles decades ago, uh, which got us to here, I want to be one of the leaders that gets us to there. So we think about that uh, community center for all, and we think about Shoreview for all. And it starts with leaders who are taking their role very seriously and thinking about it, um, not just in, for for personal gain, but for the betterment of the community and the residents which we serve. Thank you. Next answer is Jillian McAdams. 
My vision for Shoreview is pretty simple. Again, it'd be great if we could um, maintain the quality of life that we've established over the decades for families in our community and make everyone just feel welcome here. Some of us do experience issues when we go shopping or go to restaurants where we feel like we are not welcomed by business owners or by, by other patrons. And I think that's something that um, even at the city government level, we can be communicating the, the, um, the culture and the values that we have as Shoreview residents for anybody that lives here, works here, comes to visit here. In addition to that, I just think that it's great to have a more diverse um, selection of voices at the table, um, more people of color, more women, more youth, more seniors um, for the things that we're tackling here in the, at the city level. And again, going back to the safety issue, um, the unrest that we've seen in St. Paul and Minneapolis has been impacting Shoreview. A lot of the people that have been tied to some of the unrest and the riots are transversing through our community from Anoka, Andover, and other places to start bad trouble in the um, urban areas in St. Paul and Minneapolis. And I think as a city council, we need to be more conscious of that and make sure that people feel safe, mothers like me and other folks, seniors feel safe to shop in our own neighborhoods and our own stores and to, work, to, to play and work in our own neighborhoods. Thank you. Abraham Wolf. Thank you, Mary. Um, I'm a little aggressive in my thought process. Um, I think um, kind of going through my pillars of thought, uh, pillars of uh, if I was part of the um, city council, drive for debt free for the city. I think that's a big factor when it comes down to and it's a it's a it's a stretch, but it's a it's a stretch goal that I think. Imagine if the city didn't have any debt. Imagine if that we could do with what we have, and what we could do with the community, what we could do with all of the different things if we didn't have some of the debt. Now I know some of that structurally, and some of the city part, and a lot of different things. But I think that's something that's definitely possible. Uh, business big factor, if deluxe. Uh, does go and there's a business campus we need to drive that we need to run with that with that business uh, a business that is going to develop that area and bring those businesses in uh, increase revenue for the city without increasing taxes is a main a main thing we have a lot of different ideas we've got so many smart intelligent people that can find different ways that we can do that without increasing taxes and then uh, as a lot of our panel here said inclusive bring everybody together. Uh, we need to have everybody uh, part of this to be successful. Thank you. Thank you. And Sue Dankinger. So when I think about five to 10 years out, a lot of people have touched on things that I'm thinking about. Um, but I do well, number one that keeps hitting me over and over, over again is housing, affordable housing. It's for families. Um, it's for young professionals. Um, you know, it's kind of sad when you have a teacher, or someone graduate, a professional graduate from college and can't afford to live here. It took, I had to move somewhere before I moved here when I bought a house here and that was a long time ago uh, because I wanted to live here. But I would like to see more affordable housing and where it's a requirement rather than an ask with developers. And I understand that's a fine balance, but I know some communities like Edina have done that. So I would like to see that. I think uh, better transportation managed or uh, levied or lobbied for at a regional level. So we're working with other surrounding communities. So it's not like just can I get a back and forth to my job in Shoreview or Shoreview to St. Paul. It's can I get to my job in Moundsview if I live in Roseville and, and that type of thing. So that to me is also very critical. Um, I would like to see a, a stronger partnership between school, business, um, in the community and possibly I, I guess law enforcement in that as well, but certainly between schools and businesses. And there are, there are those partnerships that are taking place now, but I think they could be a, strong, a lot stronger um, and maybe a little more um, organized or um, polished because I think we have a, you know, this great school system and some kids may not pursue college, but there are a lot of manufacturing jobs in this city and sometimes they can't find people to fill those. So those are just a couple things, but I'm gonna stop now. Thank you. And that is all the time we have for questions. So we will turn now to uh, closing statements. And so the first to go is going to be Abraham Wolf. 
Thank you, Mary. Thank you uh, 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 for the opportunity to be a part of this uh, group of uh, very distinguished individuals and, uh, and uh, candidates and current members of the city council. Uh, I am running for the opportunity to uh, walk with the community, walk with uh, our citizens of Shoreview to be that person that listens and is there when individuals need someone to talk through a process or business needs support uh, or in general just listen uh, when someone's in front of the city council and uh, be available. I think with the my pillars and uh, the goals that I have, yes they're steep, yes they're aggressive, uh, but in the, these times uh, having less debt having more revenue without tax increases and uh, having more of us working together versus uh, versus the opposite. I think Shoreview is one of the best cities in not, if not the state, the country. And I think uh, being a part of that, uh, the city council would be a great, uh, great pleasure and, and a great blessing. Thank you. David Olson. Well, first I'd like to thank you, Mary and League of Women Voters for having this tonight. This has been awesome. It's uh, great to meet the other candidates and, and hear all the awesome ideas that people have too. It's really, it's been fun tonight. Um, I think it says it best on my, the website that I put together with my campaign team. Uh, I'm community powered and really community focused. Uh, I think Shoreview is an amazing place to live and I've enjoyed raising my family here. Uh, I love the youth and the community and, and the schools that we have. And like I said, I just uh, would be honored to be part of the uh, city council uh, to bring more diversity uh, to our, our local government, uh, fresh ideas and a fresh energy to, to things that are going on in the Shoreview community. So thanks again for having me tonight and I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Jillian McAdams. Yes, thanks Mary. And first again, I'd like to say thank you to the White Bear League of Women Voters for inviting me to the Shoreview candidate for tonight. It was very informative and um, it's nice to see that whoever does get voted in, they have their, their mind wrapped around the issues that are important to Shoreview um, individuals, neighbors and families. I hope I've been able to bring additional views and perspective to this conversation today. And I look forward to adding new perspectives to the conversation at City Hall as well. Even though this is my first run at City Council seat, Given my personal and professional journey to date, I believe I can bring many transferable skills, including strategic planning, process and change management control, and some cultural competency and more in community engagement ideas to the city council chambers. I have unique perspectives to offer as a long-term African-American Shoreview resident, and my goal is to turn Shoreview into one of the safest, most livable, most equitable, equitable cities in the state, and I would appreciate your vote. My family has been part of this community for four generations and we're proud of it. And I'd like to be a part of the conversation to make Shoreview an inclusive, safe and fun place for everyone to live for, for many more generations to come. Thank you so much. Thank you, Emmy Johnson. Thank you to the league and uh, fellow candidates for a chance to visit with you this evening. Uh, it's been an, uh, certainly enjoyable. During these challenging times in our country, uh, it's more critical than ever that the leaders that we elect to govern are solid um, and they have solid ethics, a high moral compass, and are strong, committed leaders. Um, you have my commitment that I will be that leader who will continue to serve you with the highest of morals, ethics, and an unwavering commitment. As this election season requires all of us to get involved, I wanna invite you, you all, and those that will view this, uh, to reach out to your family and your friends and your neighbors and encourage them to get out and vote. And I want to reaffirm my commitment to the residents of the city of Shoreview and I ask for your vote as you cast your ballot in the election of 2020. Thank you. And so Denkinger. Okay, um, well in summary I'm running for city council because actually Emmy mentioned these really uncertain times. I think it's important to have experienced and collaborative leaders to not only maintain our great quality of life, but leaders that will look forward to emerging challenges and opportunities and new ideas. So I plan to maintain focus on what has made Shoreview a wonderful place to live, including the economic development, 
to keep taxes low, quality and affordable housing initiatives and increased in community engagement so that we can reach more people in the community and they can feel valued. I bring to the table experience as a business leader, a civic volunteer for the city, a working mom, a council member, and as someone who works to balance community needs with individual needs, which is sometimes a very challenging thing to do. I have proudly served as a council member for four years in Shoreview, and I hope to serve another term as well. I again want to also thank the League of Women Voters and my fellow panelists. I'm really impressed by the talent that's running, and this is an opportunity for Shoreview in itself. Um, so thank you for holding this forum. Um, thank everybody who is watching, and I want you to know that I do appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I just That concludes our forum. I have a couple of announcements. Um, we're going to put all of our forums on our YouTube channel, and you will find links to the YouTube recordings for all of them on our website, www.lwb-wbla.org. Um, you can request an absentee ballot right now on the Secretary of State's website at minvotes.org. If you need to register or update your registration, you can also do that online when you go to vote. Uh, I want to thank you candidates for speaking to voters about the issues and for coming forward to run in the city of Shoreview. Thanks to our volunteers and to you, the viewers, for watching and your interest in becoming informed voters. Make your voice heard in the general election by voting mm -hmm. November 3rd. Thank you.